kids. Today we're going to start learning about something new, all about the ocean and the animals and plants that make it their home. So where are our Earth's oceans? Let's take a look at a map. The Earth is covered by water. 70% of the Earth is covered by water. Most of the Earth is covered with salt water. This is called our oceans. People can't drink salt water, but lots of animals and plants rely on this water as their home. So this is a map of the Earth, and it shows you where the different oceans are. Our closest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. If you ever go to the beach, you probably go to the Pacific Ocean. On the other side of our continent is the Atlantic Ocean. And then up here, where it's very cold, is the Arctic Ocean. Down below, where it's also very cold, is the Southern Ocean. Here, in between the three continents of Africa and Asia and Australia is the Indian Ocean. So those are the oceans of our planet. I'm going to read to you a little bit from our book and then I'll show you our project tomorrow, for today. <laughs> the book is called Undersea Adventure. Let's dive in. Earth is a watery world. Most of our planet, about 70%, is covered by water, and almost all of that water is in our oceans. The oceans hold more than water, though. They are also home to more than 230,000 known marine species. There are schools of yellow tang that swim through coral reefs. There are jellyfish that drift on the waves, and there are even giant whales that leap out of the water. In and out, the tidal zone. You don't have to get wet right away to see marine animals because the shoreline is our first stop. Shorelines where ocean meets the land can be rocky, sandy, muddy, or lined with trees called mangroves. As the tides go in and out, the water level rises and falls on the shore. This area, known as the tidal zone, forms a unique habitat for a variety of creatures. So what kind of creatures do we have on this page? I see some sea lions, I see some crabs, we have some mussels, here is a hermit crab, a sea star, and a sea anemone. So if you ever go to a tidal pool where you're close to the shore and there's pools of water, you might be able to see some of these animals. They're also in touch tanks if you go to the aquarium or the science museum they have touch tanks where you can touch these kinds of animals that you would see in little tidal pools near the near the ocean shore today we're going to make our own ocean pictures here's our inspiration picture think about what colors you see in this ocean picture those are the kind of colors you might want to include in your painting so if you have some paints at home you're gonna put them in a cup. Think about the colors you're gonna use. I chose to use some purple and some blue and add a little bit of water to those paints so they're watery. I think you could also probably use um, some food coloring and water to make colored water for this. You're gonna use your eyedropper. So remember how to squeeze, let go, and take it out and you can drip and drop with that. And you have a white paper. It looks like this. So you're going to start with adding your paint to your paper. I like to do lots of little drips and drops. So I'll kind of hold it up so you can see how I'm doing this. So I like to do this kind of motion where I'm dripping and dropping all along my paper to make kind of little spots because that's what I noticed in that picture. You can also squeeze it a little faster and have it drip out quicker. I'm gonna add some purple now to my painting. Now when you're done doing your painting colors, you have a little packet in your folder or in your bag of salt. 
you're going to use the salt by sprinkling it on to your your paint while it's still wet I'm just gonna use my salt shaker but you have a little packet of salt or you can use your salt from home and then sprinkle it onto your paint and see what happens what do you notice happening to your paint as you sprinkle your salt set it somewhere to dry and when it dry it's gonna look amazing here's a little sneak peek at my picture Can you see where I sprinkled the salt? Set it somewhere to dry because you might have a little bit too much paint on there. You can also, if you have too much paint, just set a paper towel on it to kind of get some of that extra puddle of paint off and then do your sprinkling with your salt so that it will dry faster. Set it somewhere to dry and when your picture dries, I bet it's gonna look beautiful. Have fun, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.